Hello, I'm Pablo Spot, and this is DevScoops, a rapid show and tell on tools and practices and cloud technology in general. So if this tickles your fancy, hit the subscribe button. So let's get into it. Terraform is very forgiving when it comes to structuring Terraform code. You can in fact have one Terraform file that contains everything that you need to stand up your infrastructure. One of the challenges that I faced when I started learning Terraform is that I find it very hard to navigate through the code and try to understand how things piece together when there is only one file. And so I started following a structure on my own, hoping that this would help anyone navigate through my code. And I think it is worth going through this structure that I follow. I have written a script that creates a standard set of templates that I can start with when writing a fresh Terraform module. So let's pretend I'm going to create a new Terraform module. So on this current directory, I will create the root directory for my Terraform module. I'm going to cd to this new directory. And to make sure that I keep track of my local changes, I will initialize git in this directory. And inside this directory, I will run my script that generates a baseline template Terraform files. If I list the files inside this directory, I will end up with a list of automatically generated set of baseline Terraform files. So let me explain what each of these files are for. Let me launch my VS code from here. Let me start talking about my backend.tf. This file will contain the Terraform block. And this is where I define where I'm going to end up storing my Terraform state files. By default, I have set this to use Terraform Cloud, but this can be updated to use S3 bucket. This is also where I define the required provider definitions. Suppose I want to set up the code for AWS required providers. I would update this Terraform block and add the necessary code to set the parameters or properties specific to AWS provider. Any other code block that needs to be inside the Terraform block will end up being added inside this file. The next file that I want to talk about is the providers.tf. This is where I define all the provider blocks. And by default, my script creates the AWS provider block inside this file. The next file is the variables.tf. This file is pretty self-explanatory. This contains all the variable blocks or input variables that are required for my Terraform module. From variables.tf, we move to the main.tf. This file will contain all my resource blocks, which I consider as the main infrastructure resources that will be created by my Terraform module. If anyone is interested to know what sort of infrastructure resources are created inside any of my Terraform modules, they will have to go to main.tf to find out how they are set. I also have a file here called locals.tf. And this contains all my locals block. I try as much as possible to move any calculations or interpolations that I require for values inside my main.tf into my locals.tf by defining local parameters. And if I have repeating resource property values like names or conditional statements that build properties, I define a local parameter inside this file and use this in any of the other files, but mostly main.tf. The next file that I want to talk about is my data.tf. I use this file for all my data blocks. This is my way of separating the code that contains data references to existing resources from those resources that will be created as defined inside my main.tf. And then I have the outputs.tf. This file contains all my output blocks where output variables of the Terraform module are defined. 
My script also creates a directory called tfvars, which will contain a default main.tfvars that's currently empty. However, if you end up integrating this Terraform module with Telegram, this tfvars directory and the files inside it are irrelevant to the infrastructure module. But if you intend to use this Terraform module directly, then this will be very useful. So this is the structure that I follow when I write my Terraform modules. I don't necessarily push for anyone to follow this pattern, but this works for me. And I have several reasons why. Number one, this structure tells me where things are straight away without having to scroll through a single file or do a search to find where the components are located. And secondly, because I have each Terraform file names suggests where things are, I can easily work my way through the code. Some people prefer to have all related components to be close to each other when writing Terraform code, and they end up with data references, resources, variables, and local parameters all in the same place. This is how I started with Terraform. However, I realized later on that I tend to repeat some set of resources and data references in my code. Having this structure allows me the possibility of reusing what I already defined in any of the files. Like say, for instance, I've already got a data reference that's defined. I can just use that same reference anywhere in my code. Once again, I'm not forcing anyone to follow this pattern. I suggest you find a structure that works for you and makes the learning experience easier. And that's it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, see ya.